Welcome to my world. I'm your host, Kevin Rutherford. It is Thursday, December 21st. We are here live. We are on the live app today. You can call in. We are back to our original phone number for now, so I'll give that to you, 855 855- Nine five zero three eight three five is the number to join us. It is a free for all today. Jump in and call us. If you use the call button on the app, it is also reprogrammed back to this phone system. We uh, we have some updates on our technology challenges. So so we have two potential systems we can do this show with. We always like that plan B. The problem was we hadn't solved the issues on plan A and plan B crashed on us. Um, major outage. Uh, Blog Talk Radio, fairly big platform, been around a long, long time. We've used them for over a decade. Um, we did find out they were bought out a while back. Their entire system went down on Friday. Nobody that uses blog talk radio to broadcast can do a show. And here it is. Today's Thursday. It's been almost a week. I don't think I've ever seen a, uh, a major software platform go down that long. So we're not able to use that one at all. I um, spent some time yesterday trying to work out the issues that had come up on this site, I think I've got them taken care of. Our plan C is always to go to Twitter spaces. We're doing everything we can to make sure we are live every day. Uh, we did work on some ideas yesterday, and we may be within a about a month of launching our own. We're close. We're going to start testing it probably uh, shortly after Christmas start doing some beta testing and try to work out the rest of the issues. But we have some uh, we have some relief on the horizon. Uh, Once we start using our own software, then at least we can blame the issues on ourselves. But we have some control over them. So I am looking forward to that. All right. Uh, I don't see any calls yet. So if you want to jump in, I'm hoping this phone system works. 855 nine five zero three eight three five or use the call in button on the app that should get you right in here as well all right something else i've been kind of talking about a little bit revealing a, a, a couple of ideas that we've been working on that really looks like it's taking shape now and it looks like it's going to happen it's not a hundred percent yet but it's pretty darn close and when it happens it's going to happen fast And it can because this program I'm talking about, we have about 90% of the work done. This, if I go all the way back to the first time I had this idea, it was probably 15 years ago. And I've worked on this project from different angles on and off for, well, ever since then. So the model that I'm, I'm working on is a new training program. It looks like, now all of this stuff is still tentative. You know me, I like to think out loud and give feedback from people. So none of this is set in stone yet, but it, we're, we're getting close. And it looks like the we may launch this or, or our first live event as part of this program may very well be at Matt's this year. That's only a couple months away. So this does all have to come together fairly quickly. I think it can. Um, We had meetings all day yesterday with uh, partners that are going to help us pull this off. So uh, I'll talk about the overall training program because this will continue to grow. Uh, We have most of this done. I believe we've got enough done to launch it um, early in the year, then have the first live event at Matt's, and it will just continue to grow from there. The idea is a training program from cradle to grave on really building a trucking company, a fleet, if that's what you choose to do. The, the training would allow you to start a business as an owner operator and grow it if you choose or not. You could stop anywhere along the spectrum and decide that that's where you want your business to be. The program will go all the way through to getting authority, becoming a carrier, and growing a fleet. So all the issues around 
owning, buying, specking, and owning multiple trucks. But the, the really big issue on the fleet side is drivers. You know, how do you build a business model that allows you to pay drivers well enough that driver turnover doesn't become an issue? Because it's the single biggest issue to owning multiple trucks is drivers. I said this the other day, I was working with somebody, buying a, a second truck is a bigger decision than buying the first because it, it carries much more risk. I can almost guarantee, I really can guarantee, if you follow the model we're going to build, you will always succeed as a single truck owner operator. It's almost guaranteed. I can never guarantee that on the second truck because a big issue is now out of our control. We now have to have employee drivers and, and you've got to set up a, a good model to do that. And I can show you how. And if you do it right, Growing a fleet it isn't necessarily guaranteed, but it becomes much easier and, and much more possible. So I believe we're still going to be able to use CMC, but this time instead of Certified Master Contractor, the program will now be Certified Master Carrier. We are going all the way back to the very beginning and we're going to teach general financial management principles and general business principles first before we even start talking about trucks. The number one reason people go out of business in any business is they are undercapitalized and they run out of money. So it doesn't do me any good to create this awesome program that teaches you how to be a, a successful carrier if you don't figure out how to manage your own money first, it will never work. If you don't understand general business concepts. Again, the good news is we already have all of that material. I, I, I've developed that material over years. Then we have several programs helping you get started buying that first truck, specking things, setting up the business. That will all be a part of this. We have the program that we spent a lot of time and effort on with truckstop.com. The starting as a carrier, getting your authority. We don't spend a lot of time on the paperwork because we tell you pay somebody else to do all that stuff. What we spend time on is setting up the business properly um, so that you can succeed and grow that as a fleet. So when I look at all of the material that uh, we've built over the years that work with this program, I'm thinking it's about 75 hours of presentation. So the CMC alone, I usually spend about 32 hours on the stage during that week. When I put all the material together, it's double that. That is a, a year long program of an hour and a half a week virtual, and then maybe a half hour for Q and A every week. This this program could be an entire year. Uh, it will also include live events when we can and when it makes sense. Uh, Matt's reached out to us and asked us if we would put together an education program for Matt's. Uh, and not during the show. This is going to be prior to the show. So Matt's is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The program we're working on now. We had meetings on it yesterday and we're all moving forward full steam uh, would be a full day education program on Wednesday, uh, probably some sort of reception event Wednesday night, something to have a little fun and wind down and, and build some relationships and make some contacts Thursday morning. We would have a half day of training and then you would be able to go right into the show. So we are working on on that idea. Uh, and we're working on it um, hard. Like I said, it's a, if we're going to pull something off by Matt's, it's, it's only a couple months away. We've already got to start marketing and getting it signed up. One of the ideas I have, and I, I want to throw this out, maybe somebody has some thoughts on how I could make this work. Here's one of the issues around this program I'm struggling with. I, I love the material. I love the concept. I'll tell you why we're launching this now, too. There's a reason we're doing it now. But I, I want you to maybe think about this, and if I could get some feedback from people, I would love that. So this could very well be a full year program. When I look at all the material and I figure, you know, how much you can really present in a week to give people time to, to learn it and understand it. it. It could be an entire year. The problem I have with that is there would, there would have to be a hard cutoff date to when you got into the program. 
And if you miss that date, it's going to be a year before we would start another class. I don't like that because a lot of people will come in a month or two in or even six months in and they, it's the first time they've heard about it, but now they're going to have to wait. So I'm wondering if there's a way I could do this where where you could start and pick up somewhere maybe into the first quarter of the program half would seem like an awful lot to catch up on i I just i'd like to find a way that if if people find out about it after the cutoff date they're not going to have to wait a year uh to get into this program so and there are some other things i i need to work out and um get some feedback on but i'm kind of giving you a peek under the tent letting you know what we're going to work on and i do believe it is going to happen uh like i said we we've got a lot of meetings we're moving towards it we're making commitments already here's the reason why like i said the, the first time i had this idea of this franchise like model and and i use franchise because in a franchise model they've worked out all of the um all of the issues on how to run this business successfully. That's what a franchise is. They've worked out the entire business model, all of the processes, all of the products, all of the services, all of the vendors, everything you need. It's it's a business in a box and you just turn the key. And if you follow the model, the business will succeed. That's why franchises are so successful. They very seldom fail. If the franchise model was built right, the franchises themselves almost never fail. So I've had that idea for almost two decades now. How do we build a franchise model in trucking? But I don't want it to be a true franchise. That That's the challenge here. Because I, I want you as the potential business owner to have all the choices. Franchises are the opposite. You don't get any choices. But I thought, well, why not build a model That is the perfect franchise model. We've already worked out all of those same things, the processes, the products, the vendors, the services, the the model itself is done. But you don't have to use the model the way you would in a franchise. In a franchise, you don't have any choices at all. That's part of the reason they're successful. But I I like the idea of freedom. And and I think people who want to own a truck don't really want to own a franchise. I think they want to run it themselves. But they want to know how, best practices, all of those things. And in the last year, a lot of things have happened that led me to believe this is the time to launch this program. Um, a couple of them, we now have the right partners to really pull this off and make it work. We, we are back under contract with Truck Stop. They're a part of this. Nastic will be a huge part of this. That's a piece of the puzzle that just out of the blue I mean, at, at one point I thought I need to reach out to Nastic and maybe make this happen. And instead, David reached out to me. And I, it, it's, I take those things as a sign. Now, the other reason I think the timing is absolutely right on this is the attack on the independent contractor model is picking up steam all over the country. That could potentially change with the next election, but we've been moving closer and closer to this every year, no matter who's in office. And the attacks I see around the country now are pretty serious. They they really want to shut down the independent contractor model. The good news is in trucking, we have a pretty easy fix. Well, well it's not in the past. It hasn't been an easy fix. This program is going to make it an easy fix. We'll show you how to become a carrier. That that That's the... That's the whole idea here. The independent contractor rule goes away. Once you get your authority, become a motor carrier, that entire issue disappears. Doesn't matter if it's California or anywhere else. um, You no longer have to worry about being put out of business because your state or the federal government decides you're no longer allowed to lease to a carrier. So it's time. The other reason is the technology now makes this much easier. In fact, I'm excited about this model because I truly believe a single truck owner operator set up properly, working with a small group of brokers is not only the most profitable way to own a truck, it's the most efficient way for the entire industry. So it's a big, big idea to get your head around. Um, I know for me, it 
seems obvious because I've had this idea for 15 years and I've worked on it a lot over those years. So it's also why I'm kind of giving you a peek under the tent and dribbling out some information a little at a time. It, it makes it easy to understand what this whole program is going to look like. So I'd love to get some feedback. If you have any thoughts on that, jump in and join me. I am hoping that um, our phones are working right. We have calls there. So uh, let's give this a shot and see what happens. Let's get started in Illinois today. Tyler, are you with me? I'm here, Kevin. Oh, look at that. You sound good on my end, too. So maybe we have our issues worked out here. Uh, What's on your mind this morning? Uh, What's on my mind is uh, I wanted to thank you for uh, everything you've been doing on this show and everything. You're welcome. I'd say since I've been 26, I'm now 32, I'd say ever since I joined this industry, uh, you saved my life. Literally, man. I remember when I first came in here, no one told me how to eat properly. No one told me how to do any of that. Just you know, drive the truck and let's go, you know? Right. And, um, <laughs> you know, I was gaining weight. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. You know, you, you listen to all these diets and then you're like, these aren't working. I'm hungry. Yes. And then one day I was on the radio and I heard you talking about this stuff. I was like, whoa, it's crazy. Bye. Right, let's give it a <laughs> shot. And then, like, ever since then, I mean, the keto stuff, all that, the paleo, everything. It's, it's great. It's terrific, Kevin. Excellent. So, you know, I just wanted to Excellent. say like, thank you for that. And also, it, it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know what I want to tell you? I, you know what I'm excited about? That you started this so young. You know, I didn't do this till I was 52. And I say now, I feel better at 60 than I did at 20. And that's not a lie. It's not an exaggeration. At 20, I had digestive issues constantly. I had joint pain almost all the time. It, it was, it, for being 20, I look back now, and, and I thought I was fairly healthy. I owned a gym. I was a wrestling coach. I was not you know, overweight at that time, but I wasn't all that healthy. And, and there are, like I said, there are things now are, that I'm healthier at 60 than I was at 20. And that happened in, in, you know, a year of, of changing. And I didn't change till I was twice your age. So I'm excited about the fact that younger and younger people are doing this and, and we can really um, turn somebody's health around for the rest of their life. Oh, it's, it's been terrific. And I was even going to top it off with, um, it even helped me join the military uh, about three years ago. I joined the National Guard, something I always wanted to Thank do. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh, I went through all their maps and stuff like that. They tested me, and I was just like a spring chicken. You know, all those numbers and results <laughs> right. were good on their end. They didn't have any complaints on my end, you know. Excellent. And it's just like they're so picky on that weight, for real. So, um, yeah. And then I also wanted to add, too, uh, since joining, you know, I've, Obviously, my colleagues and stuff I go to drill with, but uh, there's people going to school that are, like, much younger than me or 21, and I tell them, oh, I'm doing keto, and they're trying to go to nursing school and stuff. They're like, you're going to kill yourself. (laughs) You can't do that. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, it, it, it is difficult to interact with people in the medical field. It just is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, again, uh, thank you, Kevin. And, uh, I also just have a quick question about sure. my dog. I've heard you talk about it. Uh, what, what can I feed her? You know, I know you, I heard you say something about like real food, you know, but I, I'm just still stuck. That's one thing I'm like, I'm still stuck on the, the dang dog food, you know, and I really want to like do the right so, thing for her. So there's a couple things and we've, we've used both of these methods. It really depends on a couple things. One of the things you can feed your dog that, especially if budget is an issue, because you really don't spend any extra money to do this. Um, If you're eating mostly carnivore-ish kind of foods, that's exactly what a dog should eat. Dogs are carnivores. You can give a dog all the beef you want to give them. It's just as good for them as it is for us because that's their natural diet. So meat is, is a dog's natural diet. They are mostly carnivore according to the vets that that they they actually call cats true carnivores but dogs they say are mostly carnivore maybe even omnivore they'll eat some fruits they'll eat some vegetables I, i i can tell you though wolves in the wild aren't eating a bunch of vegetables because they don't even exist (laughs) right i mean wander around in the woods and try to find a head of broccoli Uh, Or, you know, cabbage, Uh, even carrots in the wild. Wolves aren't eating carrots. So wolves ate meat. You know, yes, maybe they ate some berries during the season. My dog does eat berries right off the plant, but they're carnivores. 
you know, good seafood, you know, cans of tuna, salmon, sardines, mackerel, all, all the same stuff we recommend humans eat, dogs can eat. So if you just want to feed them a real protein meat based diet from right from what you're already cooking and eating, go ahead and do that. And that that takes away the Wonderful. expense of dog food. Now, I, and we did that for years. Diesel was very healthy with that. Um, we did switch to a frozen raw meat um, food. And there are several good brands out there. I don't necessarily recommend one over the other. I, I don't even, I, I open the bag every night, but I couldn't tell you what the brand we use is. We've been using it so long, I don't even pay attention anymore. But it's frozen, and you take it out, and it takes 20 or 30 minutes to thaw it. And it's mostly raw meat. And it's also going to have organ meats. So those are all mixed in. They do throw in some veggies in a lot of the brands. I'm not going to get too worried about that. Absolutely no grains. Um, and the fact that it's raw is an advantage. And it's a little more inconvenient to try to feed your dog raw meat all the time. So we did switch to a frozen. Makes it easier when we travel. And, and like I say, there are several good brands out there. But if you're willing to just feed your dog meat all the time from what you're eating, that works just as well. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to give that a shot, you know, because uh, I just noticed, like, you know, she just has some, like, issues with her sometimes. The vet, you know, it's like they're sometimes useless. They're just, they, they tell you one thing and you're like, you know. Yeah, they 95% of the dog food on the market is the equivalent of the standard American diet. It is just the right. cheapest fillers they can find with a bunch of artificial flavors so the dogs eat it, but it is horrible for their health. It is absolute, total garbage. Like I say, it's just like the standard American diet for dogs. And at the very least, move up to a grain-free kibble. But I, but I really think moving to a raw meat, whether it's some of it could be freeze dried, frozen, just meat you're cooking them, um, meat you can feed them raw as well doesn't even have to be cooked. Um, that that's really their natural diet. Okay, well um, that sounds good, Kevin. That's all I got for you today. So uh, hopefully I'll talk to you in the future. All right, thanks for the call. Let's uh, let's continue on. Looks like our phone lines are uh, cooperating with us today. Hopefully this system if we have all the issues worked out we'll uh we'll hold us off for the next month or so while we finish up ours let's go to florida matt welcome to the program good morning kevin oh um, so what's, yeah. <laughs> what's on your mind this morning uh i guess a few issues for people that want to call in at least on the apple app the call-in button is not working Okay. The, the the numbers are correct in there. They're just not in the right format for the phone to actually dial it. Oh, got so it. They can just call the number directly. Okay. Thank you. Instead of to the, and Aaron's but, probably already got that fixed, but unless you close the app and reopen it, it's not going to update. Yeah, that's what Aaron, I did see. I just got a message that uh, yep. if, if you're yeah, on. You just sent that to me too. Yeah. That's fresh and <laughs> it would yeah. work. So Yeah, just. Um, <laughs> Close the app, reopen it, and then everything should. And I sprung that on Aaron at the last minute this morning. The last time Aaron and I talked last night, I was probably still going to be doing spaces today. And then I got up and I had a thought on how I could fix this, and it was fairly easy. So at the last minute, I said, hey, Aaron, you got to change the app back to the other number. So he was scrambling. Yep. So uh, the second thing is the Trucker Christmas Group. Yes. They're... Their website crashed. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully it's because too many people are going on there. It, well, that would and be believe, good to know. Yeah. Yeah. I believe today is kind of their last day for kind of wrapping some things up. Okay. Um, so what I just did and is working, if you want to donate money, you can go directly to PayPal and just type in Trucker Christmas Group, and it'll come up right there, trucker, truckerschristmasgroup.org. Okay. The handle, and you can send them some money that way. Oh, good, good. So, all right, they can get to a lot more families here. It's yeah, like it's been a tough year. As I, I, they were I, the other day. You know, it, it, every year there are families that are struggling. No matter how good the economy is, somebody had an illness, lost a job. You know, there's there's always stuff going on. 
Uh, but I, I have a feeling this by far is going to be the worst year as far as people hurting. Yep. So I'm assuming you didn't have a chance to tune in to read space I, yesterday. I didn't. His was running right about the same time mine was, and I haven't yep. had time to go listen to the recording yet. How It looked like it was you wildly to. successful. They had a lot yes. of people in there. Yeah, very, very good. And I know, you know, a couple of the hosts you had, I've followed them before, and, you know, it's ocean shipping and we're not right. talking trucking so it's not people that would probably ever really be on your show at least right any never regularly but so lining it up with the book the world is or the end of the world is just the beginning yeah and you had the same you said it and i've had the same thought after i read the book there was like a piece missing out of there that it just didn't make sense about how the U.S. Navy is supposed to protect all the world shipping, and uh, why would we why? stop? Right. Yeah. Well. Okay. So, luckily, and I mean, they weren't talking about the book, but the explanation came out yesterday. At least that clicked in my mind. Okay. So the agreement at Brentwood, after at the end of World War II, is that we would protect shipping, commercial shipping for. U.S. flagged ships. Not everybody, just people that wanted to pay U.S. taxes. Well, we don't... flagged U.S. Wasn't there some other maritime law that almost virtually eliminated all U.S. flagged ships? Are there really that many? Well, no, there's a difference between U.S. owned, U.S. flag. I mean, who flags it, who... Yeah. And I I don't know the details of the side of it. Yeah. But yeah, anybody... Could and, and then the second thing is the shipping company has to be doing trade a freely with the United States. Well, that makes so sense. Whatever country they're based out of, which, yeah, yeah, that just makes sense. And in U.S. currency. Okay. So we've heard all the talk recently oh. about you know China, Brazil, Russia, the all pe- these trying to get out of U.S. currency. The petrodollar. This. Yep, this is where the downfall will now start, that all of a sudden the U.S. Navy is no longer responsible for these people that want nothing to do with the U.S. dollar. Wow, that's big. Yeah. Holy then, cow. <laughs> so just some other interesting numbers in there about the cost of the, I just drew a blank on their name, the, the hoopty, the, what is it? Uh, Oopty, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Like the, the group out of Yemen. Yeah, backed by um, Iran. But, you know, they're, you know, homemade missiles and, and older technology, cheap stuff, shoulder mounted or, you know, smaller right. vehicle mounted. You know, they're shooting $1,000 rounds missiles. And we're replying with million dollar yeah. missiles. <laughs> <laughs> Something but, about that doesn't make sense. It, it, yeah, you know, in a long term attrition, it's. It, what it would cost us to keep fighting this, you know, versus Iran backing them and the Chinese manufactured. And now the shipping is getting delayed and, you know, all of our high-tech missiles require parts from all over the world and rare earth minerals and that'll all get delayed. And, and there, there is actually a point we could be running out of supply and, and is it supply. Is it a coincidence or bad timing that we've been basically supplying Ukraine with a ton of this kind of stuff that that now means that's less that we have. We um, are supporting Israel at the same time. We have to worry about uh, Taiwan, what might happen there. And we only have so many resources to go around, and it looks like we're running out. Yeah, that's, I mean, the the supply lines to, you know, have us, protecting so many areas around the globe it gets stretched thin because these ships you know they they can't really resupply in the ocean right they they do have to return to a dock somewhere that has the stockpile because you know these missiles you know it's you're not using lightweight cranes it's right this is big stuff yeah yeah so you know five inch guns that's you know big big stuff yeah (laughs) so yeah it's very, like I say, I recommend everybody, and, you know, the only way to listen to this is on Twitter, go to Reed's page and, you know, scroll through and you can listen to the right. recording. 
Yeah, I'm going to listen to it sometime today, I think. I, I want to get up to speed on this because I, I think this is a pretty big issue. Yeah. I mean, it is a good, you know, long two and a half or two hours and 45 minutes. It's, yeah. It's good, and then, you know, it's going to take some time for like you, but it's... Uh, yeah. You know, the, I personally believe the bigger issue is whatever happens in Taiwan, Taiwan we're going to be pulled into something there, I think, if that if that blows up. If that happens, if China really decides they're going to take over Taiwan, uh, that's bigger than both Ukraine and Israel put together. Yes. Now, you know, the, the same the same reason that it is hard and expensive for us to try to police the entire world's oceans, we've been doing it, but it we're, we're, it's looking like we might not be able to keep doing it. Um, part of the reason that's so difficult is the same reason we're pretty safe as a country. We're so far removed from, all, you know, Europe and Asia and, and everything that's going on that it's hard for us to keep supply lines going that far away. But it's also hard for anybody to invade us. That's one of our geolo- geographical advantages is we are difficult to invade and sustain a war against us on our own turf. But that also means it's hard for us to protect all these shipping lines like we've been doing. And the fact that they go into this too, and I can't remember everybody's name that was on there, but who exactly said this, but beating up on our government and not even the current administration, he said, under Richard Nixon was the last time we really truly had any good um, government policies related to maritime. I could believe that. We, we've been in a decline for 50 years. Yeah, I could believe and that. And now it's at the point where, yeah, I mean, not. I'm not just talking even Navy. I'm talking, you know, right, our, right. the locks and dams on the Mississippi River. I mean, everything. is. It's the whole maritime system is, you know, it's aging. It's, it well, needs investment, and nobody's doing it. You know, we, we can relate to that in trucking. Look at our entire interstate system and our bridges and, and our infrastructure. They're not in better shape than they were 50 years ago. They're in worse shape. Yeah. We haven't progressed. We've gone backwards. We may have more highways, more roads, but but they all need a lot of work. And, um, well, you know, you live close to one of the major interstate bridges that, that collapsed. That, that should never, ever happen in this country. Yeah. Yeah. And and then there's, uh, you know, the alternative is airlifting stuff in and out for like these war zones. I can't remember the number. 100 times more expensive, more fuel demand and expensive. Right. right. Yeah. Per, per pound. Yeah. But even the whole United States Air Force, all of it, you know, the. The cargo planes, all, all of their airlift capacity could replace, like, remember the Ever Given got stuck in the Suez Canal? Right. The whole airlift capacity of the United States Air Force could replace one ship. One. Right. That's, that, that's what I was that's about how to much say. material right. yeah. they move on one ship and the amount of time it would take the airlift to move the same amount of material. So... The more you hear this kind of stuff, the more the guy makes sense in his book. I swear it's such an outrageous claim, but you start to look around and think maybe he really does get it. Yeah, it's, I mean, just on the numbers, is it's amazing. And then, you know, the when he talks about the population issue, and I mean, I've been reading about that. I, I never hey. believed it was coming, but, you know, I knew in China they had a population issue for the future, but it's... It's amazing. Yeah. Hey, Matt, I just looked. I've got a ton of calls and not much time, so okay. I've, I've got to move along. Good stuff. We need to uh, we need to keep talking about that, though. Let's go to New York. Peter, it's your turn. Hi, Kevin. A couple of questions for you. Sure. Uh, for, oh, oh I didn't lose you. Nope. Go ahead. Um, first, uh, what's a broker? Just a tribute to an old friend. <laughs> and... <laughs> There you go. Uh, second, the real question is, uh, I, I listen on the app. I'm like months and months and even maybe a year or so behind. On stuff. Okay. 
Uh, heard a lot of talk about uh, this world's greatest bargain basement headset, Bluetooth. But uh, I haven't been able to pick up the name, the make model. Brand. Hopefully, somebody's going to send it to me. I could probably go back through my messages. The problem is, I get messages so many different ways: email, LinkedIn, Twitter. On our site, I have instant messages, and somewhere somebody sent this. I think it's on Twitter because the first time I heard it was on a uh, on a space, and. It caught my attention enough. The guy sounded so good that I asked him. He, he didn't bring up the headset. His his audio was so good on a space. I said, what are you using for a headset? And he said, oh, just some $49 thing I got from Amazon. He said, it, it, it says it's AI. And I thought, and I did a whole show on, you know, what kind of things are going to change because of AI. And one of the things I talked about, because I'm familiar with it, is all this audio equipment we have to make ourselves sound better. Mixing boards, amplifiers, preamps, headsets, high quality mics. Uh, it seems to me like AI could make all of that go away because AI can recreate our voice. Uh, if it can recreate the, my voice so well, it sounds like me. Well, then why can't it just recreate my voice with the perfect audio quality? And it can. Right. And, and so I said right. that, that, that lots of industries that we don't even think of could be devastated by AI and audio equipment could be one of them. And then this guy calls with this headset, but I, it's on Amazon somewhere. I don't know what would happen. Maybe I should do it. Just go to Amazon and search for AI powered headset and see what comes up. Okay. I can do that concurrently. Yeah, give that a shot and uh, and see what happens. All right, I will do and, that. And uh, uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm only a week behind on on this uh, business and beyond. Oh, there you go. I I almost wonder if I should go figure out what this headset is and see if we can just get it in our store. Because I get people. That was another thing I didn't want to uh, compete against the uh, Garmin. Oh, uh, you know. You guys have. I, I know out of my price range, but I'm yeah, sure well, it. It, we and we all. I always have to deal with that. We always have some sort of a conflict or competing product, and and you know we will not contract with two companies that compete with each other. But I also tell all of our partner companies, you very may very well tune into a show and hear me recommend something that competes with your product, and you're just going to have to get used to that. Yeah, Michelin was a great example because there were a couple specific tires. Michelin just didn't make a good tire in that size. There was a, a step deck tire I used to like from Continental. And I would have to tell all of our partners, if you tune in and you hear me, just, just get over it because it's going to happen. It doesn't mean I don't support your product most of the time. But if, if there's another product that, that fits, uh, oh, my team's on top of this. Uh, it's called the L-E-V-N, L-E-V-N Bluetooth headset. So if you look for that on, I'm going to get me one of those two so I can play around with it. And like I said, maybe we'll, I don't know. I don't know if we'll put it in our store or not, but uh, I get a lot of questions about it. Perfect. All right. I am going to move along because we have got a lot of calls and only a little bit of time. Let's uh, let's go to New York. Fred, welcome. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, uh, actually, on that headset, it is. I, I text Angie, and she gave it to you, so that's good. Um, but uh, actually, Herschel sent sent me that headset actually because he bought it, didn't really care for it, and I'm on my old headset because I'm too lazy to walk downstairs. But um, it works really good. It works well, really good. <laughs> well, a couple times I've heard people on it. The sound is just incredible. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. It has it has a very good quality as far even listening through the headset. It it's better than this. Um, I have a blue. I think it's a blue parrot that I bought in the TA truck stop. I don't it, know how many years ago. And it, you know, the, one the of actual the actual band that goes across my head is kind of fractured a little bit, but it works. Oh fine, yeah. So I, I didn't yeah didn't throw it away. You know, one of the things I've found with with both the blue parrot I've played with a lot, and obviously the Garmin. Uh, their focus is noise canceling and trucks right. are noisy, really noisy. My coach is noisy it, going down the road. It, it just big vehicles just produce more noise like that. And they, they're pretty heavy handed on the noise canceling part of it. And they have to be. 
but there's only so much you can do. If you're trying to cancel out that much noise, you're, you're also canceling out a lot of audio quality in somebody's voice. It becomes kind of flat and, and almost dead sounding. Uh, and there's just no way around that, except maybe AI. Because again, AI can do all kinds of things that our physical audio equipment just can't do. Yeah, no, that's 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 definitely a, a possibility. Because I mean, I don't know how I haven't used it in the truck. Because when he sent it to me, he I, I was actually up here in New York renovating the house at the time. So I just started using it maybe about a week and a half ago. And okay, it works fine. I, I think I'm um, just going to give I, me one and play around with it. Yeah, I mean, it's only, I think it's $50 on Amazon, <laughs> I know. Not, not much. I know. So, yeah. uh, but, you know, I have a bone to pick with you. What are you trying to do? Increase increase the market size? Uh, you know, I mean, come on. We're over, we're over, we have too many no. drivers as it is, Kevin. What are I, you doing? I, I have a mission. I'm going to create as many new carriers as possible in 2024. Boy, I'll tell you, I don't know if I can be a tribe member now. You're trying to hurt my business. Yeah, I, I am going to change the supply and demand <laughs> curve again. Well, that's good. Listen, I mean, I I want as many carriers as we can get out here. What the hell? You, you know, and here's let, uh, here's the let, difference. Let people let people you know win win on their on their on their mer- on their merits. Yeah, I, I I absolutely agree with this. That I'm all about competition. So I I, I do have a mission in 2024 and beyond to create as many carriers as I can, but. The difference is I want to create really, really good business carriers that know that really know what they're doing. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, your, your, uh, your statement, as far as buying a second truck, you know, what people, what people should take into account, I'm sure you're going to address this for those who go into your, into this uh, program with you. You cannot, look at the revenue you're generating with the first truck, unless you have some kind of contracted deal or in with a couple of different brokers that you know what kind of revenue the truck could generate. If you're just going to be out there, you know, in the wilderness without having some good quality brokers. So I, I would, you know, it's hard to give someone a, a any kind of guarantees. And that's what drivers really want. They want some sort of... Uh, Security, I guess, not maybe not a guarantee, but some sort of security um, to to pull them away from whoever they're driving for now. Right. So that's right. something you, you yeah. really need to understand. You know, they, they don't have. They're never going to have the mentality of an of the way an owner does. It, exactly. And that's okay. Right. Right. You know, again, uh, along those lines, one of the things that all came together with this was. There are some pieces now. One of them is Nastic with their vetted broker program. Uh, There's also some software that might be available here through one of our partners that would allow us to manage broker networks, private broker networks. So instead of a load board where just any broker that has an account can post, we would have private load boards where only vetted brokers would be adding freight. And we will make it very easy to build relationships with those vetted brokers. You know, that's really an awesome tool right there. I mean, and I would even subscribe to that because, you know, when I'm in an area, if I do get to an area that I don't know, or if I want to go to an area that I just want to explore, having a, 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 a pool of guys that are like-minded trying to make everyone succeed so they can succeed would yep. be perfect. And I think yep. that's where... That's where I think you're going to succeed with this, but, you know, 100%. Because if you have guys that have this oddball freight and you get a carrier that wants to do that, I mean, that's a, you could definitely match people up very easily. With that. We're, a lot of things are coming together that, that it really makes sense to launch this program now. Like, like I said, it, this is That's not exciting. a new idea. I've had this idea for a long time. I've worked on it many times. I've talked about it on and off in the past, and it just never felt like it was the right time. And, and I would always end up kind of setting the project aside and saying, well, I'll come back to that. There, there's one more issue we can't seem to solve. And it never felt right. And this last trip, I spent a lot of time with Brent. I spent a lot of time with, with David Owen at Nastic. Um, David introduced me to a lot of his business partners and, and a lot of pieces kind of came together on this trip. And then when I look at what's going on um, with AB5 and the independent contractor rule, it, it's time. Yes. 
Yes. And um, to Matt's credit, I mean, I wouldn't have read that book, uh, The End of the World is Just the Beginning, without Matt suggesting it on the show. And I had the same exact thought that Matt did, because I did try to get into read space. I got in a little, maybe not late, but late because I wanted to go to your yeah, you know, your space as well. Um, but uh, I did hear that, and that was my first thought. This is where the Navy's, the, the U.S. is going to stop protecting people. I think you know, everybody that read the book had that feeling like he makes a lot of sense, but what is going to be the trigger for this actually happening? It, to me, it didn't make sense that the U.S. is going to run out of people and all of a sudden we don't have enough people to do this. But that, that was about the only explanation there was in the book. But now this explanation of, and we're seeing it happen, the U.S. is already starting to say, look, we can't be the world's police anymore. We can't afford to police the entire world's oceans, and we're starting to pull back from that. And now we have this issue of, you know, the, the Red Sea, and we have to change shipping lanes, and uh, we're we're starting to see this stuff actually happen. Fred, I got to cut you loose. I got to get to a couple more calls here before we wrap this up. Let's go to Oklahoma. Lloyd, welcome to the program. Hello, Kevin. Uh, Merry Christmas. And thank you for taking my call. Uh, I've got a question about negotiation. I'll give you a little bit of background if I can. Sure. I'm a company driver. I work four days a week. My supervisor has been my supervisor for about two years. He was one of our sales, a member of our sales team before he came, became my supervisor. He was just tired of sales. So he knows not a lot about trucking, just what he's learned over the last two years. Okay. So things have kind of got, things have kind of gotten out of hand with our 10 truck fleet. And he's looking for somebody to help him wrangle things in. Company drivers, uh, here's a good example. The other day, we had two drivers call in sick. And when I was done with my shift, I kind of got filled in and was going to run a truck uh, for one of the drivers that called in. And the truck had three flat tires on it. Just kind of unacceptable kind of stuff. And I said to him at the end of the day, I said, hey, I can help you bring this stuff back in line but I want to be compensated for it. Right. So he said he talked to the first of B, and that's kind of where we're at now. So I, I feel like I have a pretty good, pretty good leverage uh, to help the company recoup some money over silly things like this. Okay. But I'm just not sure where that value lies. What, what, what would be yeah. a good number kind of a thing? I've got an idea for you. Coming up with specific numbers is almost impossible with me not having enough information. But I've got a little, it's a 10 truck fleet. I kind of know what could be saved here. One of the ways I always like to approach this, and there's two reasons I take this approach. One, I'm a risk taker. And two, I'm a troubleshooter. I'm confident that I can solve problems, fix things, save them money. So I am much more likely to propose either nothing up front or something very small up front. And then I want a percentage of the savings that I generate you for the next two years. I'd much rather negotiate a, a residual stream of income based on savings rather than, well, just pay me up front and I'll see what I can do, or pay me hourly, or, or I, I, if you want to get a little bit up front, maybe you negotiate that in. I, I'm always willing to go nothing up front. Let me just prove myself, and you give me a percentage of everything I save you. Yeah, I, I've got a lot of ideas around that. Like, just, just for instance, the fuel, our fuel situation, we, can, we have an open fuel card. We can fuel anywhere we want. These well, guys who's, are pulling up to, whose fuel card is that? <laughs> it's uh, Calm Data, and it's open. We can fuel anywhere. So these guys yeah. are pulling up to... Which they, also they means you're, the, you're not getting good discounts. Right, exactly. I can save them thousands of dollars just there. Well, well one of the things you, you should do for a 10-truck fleet, because obviously they're not a Nastic member, uh, you could save them a ton of money in, in one fell swoop just by getting them signed up for Nastic's programs. Not The fuel card would be the biggest. 
they could probably save money on insurance, on drug testing, on uh, safety compliance, on all kinds of programs. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about that since you've been talking so much about NASDAQ over the last few weeks. I, 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 will, I, mean, I, I will make the statement now. I can't for the life of me understand why every trucking company with less than 50 trucks is not a member. Totally agree. I mean, I've got so many ideas rattling around my head. I'm like, man, I, I if I were to just get a percentage of their sales, I, I, that's the way <laughs> I would negotiate it. I, I would negotiate it as, as nothing up front. Let me volunteer. I'll just, I'll get this started. Here's where you're going to see the savings. And when you see those savings, this is the percentage I want. And, and the beauty of that, the beauty of that is you're taking all the risk, but we know it's not much of a risk because you and I both know we could save this company thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. The company has no risk. They're not paying you anything unless they actually save money first. So for them, this is kind of a free program. How do you turn that down? Right. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Totally agree. So All right, Kevin, it, it, I appreciate it, that. If you want, reach out to me on, uh, are you a member of either of the, uh, are you a member of the tribe sites? I am not. Are you on Twitter? I, I, I'm afraid of Twitter. Okay. <laughs> send, send it. Can you e either record this or write it down? It's pretty simple. Um, send me an email to support at let's truck .com. Support at let's truck. Um, okay, I got it. Send me an email, and uh, I, I'll set you up with uh, Direct Connection at Nastic. Awesome. In fact, Thank you very much, Kevin. It, 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 in fact, we, we will be onboarding companies like this directly with David himself. Okay. Well, sounds like this could be a good opportunity to really score some, some big points. There you go. Dollars. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Kevin. You're Merry welcome. Christmas. Talk to you soon. Merry Christmas. Let's go to South Carolina. Terrence, welcome. What's up, Kev? Well, I got two things. First thing, I got a great recipe that I came up with for the soup from the store and the air puffs, the hey, cheese puffs. It's kind of funny because <laughs> I, I, I have a recipe for the soup for the store, too. Go ahead with yours. So... I have one of those little, I get them on Amazon, they're like 29 bucks, you plug them, and they, they burn out sometimes, but little like a little cooker. Oh, yeah. So I take the soup, I put the soup in there, and I bring a couple of packages of the air puffs. So I'm, I'm right now I got uh, the Tuscan chicken. So I got the, the smoke, the, the gouda. Oh, right. You just, when, it, when it starts to get warm, you just sprinkle a package or two on top of it, and you got a nice cheesy um, There you go. Soup. Yeah. You know what's interesting, <laughs> because my recipe does the same thing yours just did it does it differently here's what the soup is missing by the way i love the soup almost everything i've tried the chili's good the soup's really good the chili's fantastic in my mind all of the soups are missing the same two things they need more salt fat and, um, and salt uh, right yeah. fat yeah. and salt yeah. and what is what are those cheese crisps fat and salt Fat. <laughs> right. They're yeah. fat and salt. That's why they make that soup so much better. That's what was missing. What I was doing was in each each package of soup, before I would throw it in the microwave to heat it up, I'd put in two tablespoons of butter, a bunch of good quality salt, and a little bit of hot sauce. Same thing. There you go. Yeah. Yep. And, and that soup becomes incredible at that point, and it's very clean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah, because I was doing. The, I do the butter too because I got. I'm, you know, sometimes if I not pay attention to it, I'll forget. I got it plugged in, and it'll get a little warm on the bottom, and you know, sometimes stuff yeah. will stick. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, it 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 yeah. just needs more fat. The soup is very clean. Flavors are all good. It's just it needs some salt and it needs some fat. If I don't see. I haven't heard anybody talk about other people talk about. It. I think that stuff. The I mean, it's so easy, Kevin. Oh, like if I know I'm oh. gonna like lunch. I just I just take a package. I don't even got to open it up. I could just take the package, put it inside my little lunchbox thing. Uh -huh. When I get to one I want to eat, I rip it open, pour it in there, <laughs> plug it in, and then you know, half hour later I'm eating hot soup. I, I, it's like and 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 and, and, and like I said, people say they can't get anything. Oh, I can't find easy food. It's so easy, it, and it, the price <laughs> for it. If you go to get somewhere else, something else at a store, a convenience store, you're paying way more than you get you, crap. You, you know? pay that for a Happy Meal these days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will yep. tell you that 
during not so much when I was parked and sitting, like when I was in Nashville for a week or, or those kind of things, because then I'll usually cook something, you know, a steak, chicken thighs, something like that. During my drive time, that soup was my go to every day. I, when I would stop to just take a break, I'm a little hungry, I'd throw some soup in. It, it doesn't take you five minutes to make it need it. Yep, yep. That's a, yeah, as long as you might get microwave, you know? Yeah. Yep, definitely. Yeah, good stuff. So now here's a real quick thing now. This is funny. Yesterday when I was talking to you, I was in a brand new Peterbilt. Uh, I think it's a 347. Um, they, some guy low preloaded, and I was taking it out, some, out by Georgia, actually, almost. But I'm, I'm looking at my stress levels on my, on the, and I'm like, I'm in the fifties. I'm like, what? What's? I mean, I didn't change anything different. I don't think I was stressing over the new truck. I'm thinking it was something in that truck, like a oh, it could have been plastic or something yeah, that I was it, reacting to. Because I'm ne- Kevin. I'm ne- even with all the bullshit I got going on. No, I, I'm, I'm never in the fifties. That that is I'm really, never in the 50s. That is really high. I, I would predict that either you had a very traumatic event, which you haven't. I mean, you're, you've been dealing with the traumatic event for a while, and we know what it's done. But right, it, it has to be some other environmental impact for your stress to go up that okay, fast. Okay, because I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking I'm going, I'm not, I mean, I, I, you know, I feel good. I'm not, I mean, after my outburst on Sunday with the, <laughs> I guess I vented, yeah. but, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's yeah. just uh, I, I just, I'm, I was shocked and I, and I got home and then when I got this morning, you know, I, I got this morning, I was at nine. Uh, yeah, there my, you go. My, my, uh, yeah. yeah. So it, it had to be something in the truck. I think and now so. I'm in my truck and I'm at like 15. So Perfect. I think there was something in there that didn't, uh, that's All what right, it I'll let you like. go. If, uh, you, are you doing one tomorrow, or you don't know? Uh, yeah, we're doing a show tomorrow. Are you doing a show? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Take care. And then just Bye. so everybody knows, I'm off all next week. No live shows next week. Let's go to Tennessee for the final call. Justin, you get the last word. What's on your mind today? Hey, how you doing? Uh, Good. I got a couple questions. One with the, uh, the PRO Act. How do you think that's going to affect carriers like, you know, that – exclusively pretty much hire like owner operators like Landstar and Mercer and all them. You think they're just going to like kind of like fizzle out and become brokers or? Well, the good news is all of those carriers already have brokerages. So it's not any big change for, I I mean, it's a big change because take Landstar, for example, they run probably 10,000 independent contractors. And right. it, it, they have a brokerage and they can shift all of their freight to their brokerage and then only work with carriers. And that's why we're building our program that we're building. I, I think it's time. I, I think uh, almost everybody who is leased to a carrier, and I don't mean anybody should jump ship right now, but yeah, in order for us as an industry to be able to respond to this, we have to start putting plan B in place because nothing is going to right. happen fast. Um, it would be a huge shift for Landstar, but they could certainly do it. They have everything in place. Most big carriers all have brokerages. I'll tell you one of the companies right. that really makes me wonder, um, it would be far more complicated for somebody like FedEx. FedEx Ground, who probably has fifteen or 20,000 independent contractors, and it's not as easy for them to just go get their authority because how do you deal with all the doubles and the dedicated routes? And I mean, FedEx has a complicated system right now with dedicated runs and all of their, Uh all of their van guys. What do they do? I mean, that whole model could be wiped out. That's one of the companies I really worry about because their model's so different and it doesn't, it's not as easy for them to just say, oh, well, all of our our carriers can go get their own authority and we'll broker stuff to them. I don't think that can work for FedEx. That's That's a huge issue. Now, the other thing that's going to happen, if the PRO Act were to pass, it's immediately going to be challenged in the courts. And so enforcement will be put on hold, just like AB5 got put on hold for a couple of years. And now AB5 is no longer on hold because it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Ninth Circuit upheld the law and said it's legal. And the Supreme Court said, we're not even going to hear the case. 
So then it goes back to the Ninth Circuit, and it's technically now illegal to lease to a carrier in California. It did take a couple of years. And I will tell you this, there are still carriers in California who lease owner-operators. Until somebody gets charged with this and taken to court. Um, So nothing ever happens overnight. But what we don't want to do is sit back and wait for it to happen and then try to scramble and figure out what we're going to do. We we can see the writing on the wall. This is coming. Right. Trying to be proactive. And it's time to get ready for this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Second thing, uh, about the lease to a carrier, and I'm trying to figure out because in my mind, you know, saving for maintenance would be built into your operation cost per mile, right? Sure. Yep. <clears throat> so on my expenses, I have a variable and, and a fixed a expense spreadsheet or whatever. Would I, could I add a uh, like a variable uh, expense to that for savings for maintenance? Would that be... Yeah, there's a couple ways to, to, to look at this. We, we could pick a random number in the beginning, and, and a good random number would be, what, what year is the truck? Uh, 2020. How many miles are on it? Uh, 525,000. What engine? Uh, ISX. Okay, I would start with 25 cents a mile as your maintenance cost. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, 25 cents a mile, and, and you just start putting that away every week. And that immediately right, starts right. to build a maintenance savings because we don't spend 25 cents a mile week after week after week. We might spend right. nothing on maintenance for a month and then we get a big bill. But a good number to right. start with that year, make model of truck with that engine, start putting aside 25 cents a mile and you'll be in good shape. Okay. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Kevin. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. And we are going to wrap this up, and we will return in less than five minutes with Rolling Toe. So don't go away. I'm going to close out this show, and uh, Mike and Kevin Beckett will be right back. We also will see you back here tomorrow for trucking technology and efficiency and a Friday free-for-all. We'll have a little fun with that. Uh And then next week, I'm off all week. Now, I'd like to say I'm just taking the entire week off, but um, this project coming up, like I said, we're kind of scrambling uh, for a launch at Louisville. So I will probably end up um, working next week on that program. Also, later on today, um, I always forget the time but I'm sure we've put out emails and texts and all kinds of things. Uh, Later on today, we have um, group coaching health. So I will see you there. Be safe, be profitable, be fit and healthy. Always do the hard work and master the journey.